Porsche, a name synonymous with performance and precision engineering, has graced the automotive world with a rich history of iconic vehicles. Now, while many associate Porsche with its legendary flat-six engine, the German automaker once delved into uncharted territory with a flat-16 powerhouse that has remained a hidden gem in its racing legacy. The era of the 1960s and 1970s was an exciting time for motorsport, and Porsche was determined to leave its mark. Already renowned for its flat 12 engines, notably featured in the 908 and 917 race cars, Porsche ventured into unexplored territory with the flat 16. The flat 16 engine, although rare, wasn't entirely unheard of. V16 engines had their moment of glory in the 1930s, with manufacturers like Cadillac and Marmon installing them into luxury cars. But Porsche's decision to experiment with the flat 16 layout for a race car was a bold and unique move. The genesis of Porsche's flat 16 engine can be traced back to its involvement in the American Can-Am racing series. And unlike many other championships, Can-Am had remarkably liberal regulations, allowing for the creation of exceptionally powerful cars. These lax competition rules led to the creation of some of the craziest cars in racing history. Now if Porsche wanted to compete against the massive V8 engines in these race cars, which produced over 600 horsepower in the 1960s and over 800 horsepower in the early 70s, Porsche had to find a solution to gain a competitive edge. Now Porsche entered the Can-Am series in 1970, campaigning with the 908 and the 917K Le Mans car. However, these cars proved to be underpowered when pitted against formidable rivals from McLaren, Lola and Chaparral. In pursuit of more power, Porsche decided to expand on its successful flat 12 engine, leading to the birth of the flat 16. The result was a colossal 7.2 litre flat 16 engine capable of churning out an astonishing 880 horsepower at a spine tingling 8000 rpm. It is essential to note that this incredible power output was achieved without any forced induction. This was a naturally aspirated powerhouse. Now to accommodate this massive engine, Porsche modified a 917 race car featuring cleaner exterior lines compared to the Le Mans variant. The car also featured chassis adjustments to accommodate the larger power plant. Four of these flat 16 monsters were crafted, signaling Porsche's serious intent to compete in the Can-Am series. And Mark Donoghue, the renowned racing driver, was chosen to conduct extensive testing. Now Donoghue described the flat 16 as a ferocious beast and believed it had the potential to unleash up to 2,000 horsepower if it was turbocharged. However, the Flat 16 never had the chance to grace the racetrack in an official event. And you might wonder, what led to this decision? Intriguingly, nothing really went wrong with the Flat 16. It was powerful and remarkably reliable. Porsche, however, opted to pursue a turbocharged route with a smaller Flat 12 engine. In 1971, Porsche continued racing the naturally aspirated Flat 12 engine, but introduced a turbocharged 5 litre version of the same engine in 1972. Now my guess to why Porsche decided to cancel the massive flat 16 is, well, maintenance. Racing engines work hard and need to be rebuilt and fixed between races, and the turbo way was probably just cheaper and easier. Now this turbocharged flat 12 engine wasn't weak either, producing a formidable 900 horsepower, and the 900 horsepower symphony found its home in the 917 slash 10k and clinched the Can-Am championship ending McLaren's five-year dominance. While the naturally aspirated flat 16 was not significantly less potent than the turbocharged flat 12, Porsche returned to Can-Am in 1973 with the 917 slash 30 and this car was well insane. The car boasted a twin turbocharged 5.4 litre flat 12 engine capable of delivering a staggering 1580 horsepower propelling Porsche to another championship victory and even today 50 years later the 917-30 remains the most powerful race car Porsche has ever constructed. Just imagine driving one of these. It made 1580 horsepower and weighed only 800 kilograms. That's 2000 horsepower per ton. That's a dangerous amount. Anyways, back to the flat 16. Porsche's flat 16 engine was not a failure in the traditional sense. Instead, the German engineers deemed a turbocharged layout more advantageous, leading to the retirement of the flat 16 before it saw any official racing action. 
two of the four flat 16 engines have survived to this day with one residing in the Porsche Museum occasionally making public appearances. And for those that want a sound clip, I got you. Now for enthusiasts and automotive aficionados, witnessing the Flash 16's power on the racetrack would be akin to reaching automotive Valhalla. While it remains a hidden gem, there is always hope that Porsche might one day unleash the Flat 16 monster for a triumphant return to the track. But if we are honest, with all the new climate and emission rules, that day will probably never come. Now at the end of the video, please let me know what you guys thought of the video, what you guys think of this car, and if you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did enjoy it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh? Shut